What's up guys, this is Mike Loris, and I'm going to be bringing you Game 2 between CLG and Mouse Sports. Once again, this is from the defense, as you can see from, well, the top, I guess. That's the only place where it is decided. All about the International 2. Uh, this is going to be between CLG and Mouse Sports, and it is the winner's bracket of the defense. So, whoever loses this, uh, the set, is going to go down to the loser's bracket, where they will still be in the tournament, just they will have a longer road ahead of them. Whoever wins this will continue on in the winner's bracket. CLG so far uh, is up 1-0 out of the best of three. So if they win this, then there goes the set. If they lose this, then this goes to a game three. Let's hide that right there. The bands coming out are extremely standard. Uh, like in get first band, but hell, he's in there. Uh, Nature Prophet once again managing to get through the pool, as did the Invoker. So... Um, something interesting that actually is right there on the screen is that Chen is banned out by Mouse Ports. And Chen actually got picked up by, um, who, who played it? Um, Come With Me, I believe, was playing the Chen last game for Mouse Ports. But this time I guess they didn't want to pick it up. Didn't, didn't give uh, CLG the chance of doing any sort of early game pushing with the Chen. But instead, CLG is going to say, screw that, we're going to do it anyway with the Enchantress, so they're not going to have the same amount of healing power or like control later on in the game, but early on they will get that burst of creep power that you could only find in the jungle. CLG also going to pick up that Invoker. So, so far, uh, everything is looking pretty standard. CLG will have a little bit of pushing, but then again, Mouse Sports will be no slouches in that area either with that Nature's Prophet, and if this Nature's Prophet is as is played as effectively as the last one, the costs Age of Profit. Well then CLG's gonna be in for a world of hurt. Um yeah, Invoker picked up first this time, managed to get through the first ban phase, but not well he got picked up in the first pick phase, so not exactly the fourth pick, and CLG apparently values the Invoker that much more than Mouse Sports does. It will give them a very solid mid lane. If they decide to do that, Enchantress 100% going to be going in the jungle, doing some sort of uh, pseudo tri lane business with whoever's, or pseudo dual lane at least, with whoever is in the nearby jungle. Uh, it remains to be seen whether or not CLG will try to do offensive Enchantress jungling, and ooh, we actually see the Mouse Sports pickup of Shadow Demon once again, as I said in the last game. Uh, Mouse Sports does like to run a Kunkka Shadow Demon lane. They didn't pick it up last time. And Leshrac not in the pool anymore, because Leshrac was pretty influential last game. The chain, the stuns early on were pretty devastating. Sand King getting picked as well. So they do have this um, Burrow Strike and Disruption, Soul Catcher, kind of not as strong combo as a Leshrac. But nonetheless, it is a play stun. Sand King's Burrow Strike doesn't really need it. But it does help quite a bit, especially if you could tag them with that Soul Catcher. And so far, CLG is extremely, extremely soft. So that combo will do pretty much great damage to anyone who they could land it on. And uh, I'm trying to think of stuff to say that's not really about the game, because right now it's kind of Venomancer. exactly the same stuff we see every game. Venomancer going to give CLG even more pushing power. So if, ex if Invoker goes... For an Exhort build, they'll have the Forge Spirits, they'll have whatever Enchantress decides to pick up. They'll have the Ward Things, the Venomous Wards, and that will give them both a lot of counter push and a lot of push. So CLG will have a lot of control uh, over the lanes. They will be constantly fighting against the Nature's Prophet, who is going to try to push down every single lane as fast as he can, or whenever he can, to find opportunities to teleport there, pick up some extra CS. Get his team some lane control. Enigma, Night Stalker also being banned. Uh, Night Stalker, not so much as a not as much as a common pickup as the Enigma, who uh, you would see very frequently in the first stages of the picks. But still, uh, he could be pretty influential, especially on the CLG side. That would give them a very early uh, power lineup as far as the ganking goes. Venomancer, Night Stalker is a terrifying lane. You aren't stunned necessarily, but you're not going to be moving that much either, so. Juggernaut actually being the ban out from Mouse Sports, which is fairly interesting. Um, I mean, like, it, it does make sense. Uh, Juggernaut, Venomancer lane with an Enchantress in the jungle, 
if the Juggernaut decides to pick up a couple points of the Healing Ward, as Juggernauts in these types of games usually do, it will make their push extremely fearsome, and Chantress's creeps just won't die. Plus, you got the nice uh, Gale Spin combination, which could do a lot of damage to Mouse Sports. Probably won't kill anyone on the Mouse Sports side, because you could disrupt whoever is being spun. You could Barrel Strike away, you could teleport away even, so stuff like that will keep them safe, but I guess Mouse Sports don't want to deal with that coming out from CLG. Uh, once again, CLG ranking third in the Ghost of Gamers ranking list. I believe it was third, yeah, it was third, uh, with I think Navi number one and PB at number two. PB coming off a very big win in the uh, Pro Dota League, Pro Dota 2 League. So, uh... Go USA. Morphling being banned out for CLG. Don't want to give Mouse Sports that hard carry. But uh, there still are a couple of options for hard carrying if Mouse Sports decide to go for that. They could turn their lineup into a big team fight lineup. Pick up something like a Tide Hunter and um, I don't know, pretty much anything. We're going to see what they want to do with that. They could go for 4 1. And have the Nature Prophet, Shadow Demon, Sand King, and then, well, whoever they're going to pick up for now. Just hold the fort until the last hero could get bulky enough to kill everyone in his path. I wouldn't necessarily put it past Mouse Sports, but I would expect more of a mid-game lineup from their type of team. The Rubik is going to be the choice, so that will give them another support. Going to maybe take a little bit of the farm, but most likely going to split the farm between Shadow Demon, it's also going to give them another play stun. So right now, Mouse Sport is extremely stun heavy, where CLG is actually extremely stun light. So kind of have that situation going on once again. It will mean CLG will have a little bit more of a tougher time pinning down the likes of the Sand King and Nature's Prophet. Well, Nature's Prophet especially, actually. But ooh, CLG actually going to go for the Anti-Mage, so they're going to go for a 4-1 build. We're going to see if Mouse Sports decide to respond in kind with someone who could combat the Anti Mage or just uh, try to outpush him. Rubik is a pretty decent pusher. He's not exactly uh, Lashrak or Enigma ranking or tier as far as pushing goes, but his Fade Bolt does do a lot to help mitigate the damage that the other Creep Wave deals to yours. Plus, it'll weaken the other Creep Wave a whole lot. So, it's mostly about preserving your own Creep Wave when you're pushing with Rubik. It's not the most influential, but. It still gets the job done. Rubik, unfortunately, doesn't really have that many fantastic... Oh, there's the Kanka. He doesn't have many fantastic spells to steal. Uh, no Black Holes, no Ravages. Enchantress's spells to steal aren't the greatest. Invokers, well, if you could get a good one of the Invoker, depending on what build the Invoker wants to do. I'm going to say Wex for this kind of game. Uh, depending on what you draw from him, it could be either really good or absolute trash. The Venomancer and Anti-Mage, not really the biggest as far as their ultimates go, but uh, the Kanka pickup from Mouse Sports, they do like to do this. Lane the uh, Sing Sing as Kanka, and 1437 as the Shadow Demon in the mid lane. Then you have a very nice Disrupt into Torrent combo, not to mention all the harass that comes out of this lane, just uh, out of that lane, just by the, uh, for one, the Shadow Demon's range, and for two, the Kunkka's range. At your service. Well, how often do you hear that, but Kunkka being a melee hero and all, but either way, that will give them pretty sheer dominance over the mid lane. It's going to be pretty rough for whoever decides to go in there, but Windrunner is going to be the final pick for CLG. That is going to solidify their 4-1 lineup, give them a little bit of stunning potential. So right now, they only have that one spell. That's really the only one that stuns. Cold Snap also, if the Invoker decides to do that build. Uh, well, either way, he's going to have Cold Snap or a little bit of cold snap at least. But CLG racing for the late game where Mouse Sports kind of going for a more team fight oriented build. Their Kunkka could do a lot of burst damage and a lot of like sustained damage as well if they build it like that. But usually from the Kunkkas on Mouse Sports you see getting the big ol' kill everyone in one cleave type of item such as the Shadow Blade into crit and all that good stuff. And wow that flower, that's pretty sweet. I'm just going to skip through this again. Mouse Sports, Bamboo is going to be playing the Nature's Prophet. 1437 once again on the Shadow Demon. Come with me on the Rubik, who kind of looks really weird. His portrait is... Is that portrait messed up? I feel like it is. Usually he's really close. Kunkka with a Pimp Hat being played by Sing Sing. And Black, the Sand King, is going to cap off the Mouse Sports lineup. 
on the CLG side, we have Miracle being played. Uh, Miracle being played with the Venomancer. That doesn't sound right. But Miracle is on the Venomancer. The cost is on the Windrunner with Aki on the Enchantress, Pycat on the Invoker, and Misery heading towards the bot lane as the Anti Mage. If he solos that lane, I will be very surprised since you never really see a solo Anti Mage. He's most likely going to be up against, well, Nature Prophet has three clarities, so he, uh, his build isn't really totally indicative of a jungle or a non-jungle build, but either way, it will be a Rubik Sand King lane, and is Rubik, like, really far away? I feel like that was the same thing for Chen. Am I crazy? Isn't his face usually, like, filling up the whole screen? Like these guys, have their face filling up the whole screen? That's really fucking weird. And he's... What? Doesn't anti mage usually? Anti mage looks really weird right now. I don't. Something's wrong. I don't know what. Something's really bugging me with this anti mage face. I I don't even care about. Okay, no more of that. Anti mage is going to be going up against Bambo, so it's going to be a landing profit. Profit will have the advantage there, but anti mage uh, let's kind of count his blessings. He's not up against a really harassment heavy kill lane. But when Mouse Sports picks a Shadow Demon and a Kunkka, you kind of know 100% that they're going to be dual laning the mid. It's just a matter of are they going to be sending two people to the bot lane or are the two people to the top lane? In this case, Misery is only going to have to deal with one person, so he is going to be able to walk up and get some farm or at least stay in experience range. So Anti Mage will have that going for him. Aki, Miracle, and Lacoste will be tri laning it up. They're going to run to Come With Me. Come With Me is in a lot of trouble. Gale going off right now, and Right Click's coming out as well. Power Shot is armed on Lacoste to see if he wants to use it, but the Venomous Gale, so much slow, and Rubik getting taken down only 40 seconds into the game with Lacoste picking up the first blood. That is exactly what CLG wanted. Lacoste is going to be the one, the uh, farming one, in that lane. In the meantime, Pycat, the trees are still bugged. God damn it. I, he ate through that tree, but it doesn't show up. So the trees are bugged, which is at least there's no broodmother this game. It's it's better, I guess. Uh, let's get total. Let's go gold per minute, actually. <laughs> Windrunner leading the way. Who could have seen that one coming? Picking up first blood. That is going to put her at a very big advantage. Uh, Sand King most likely the one that Mao's wants to get the farm on this lane. It's going to be very very hard for him having the enchantress in the jungle. And the Venomancer to just use his uh, right clicks, not even to mention the Lacoste's right clicks, which will be a little bit stronger now that he has picked up that Ring of Basilius. Misery trying to do a little bit of pulling, but Bambo seems to be aware of his shenaniganry and to just draw away that creep wave. Force Misery to try to last hit under the tower, which Misery can very well do because, well, it's a member from CLG for one, and also it's Misery for another, so he should be fine as far as that goes. Miracle and Aki. Playing very aggressive. Want to keep Come With Me as far away from that Windrunner lane as possible. And Come With Me now is in a little bit of trouble. He's getting hit by the Gale once again. He has to use his Levitate. Maybe uh, put Aki on the high ground? No, he's actually just going to slam the Wildkin down onto Aki. But it doesn't matter because Enchantress has picked up another kill for CLG. So this Rubik not panning out for Maus at all. And now we do see the Enchantress as well as the Venomancer. So while sending this Tornado, the most annoying spell in the game, to go and harass Sing Sing and Kunkka. Sing Sing and 1437, they have spotted out 1437 because Tornado, do, uh, they do have Flying Vision. So 1437 already going to take quite a bit of damage from that Tornado, and you can't really escape that. They can choose to go up there. A torrent will disrupt it. A uh, Disruption will disrupt it. Go figure, disrupting go a Disruption going to disrupt something. But so far this lane not doing too well. Mao's is looking to do a little bit of a switch, sending Shadow Demon to the bot lane. Looking to get a kill on Misery. I don't know how... if this is actually going to happen. Uh, Misery seems to know someone is up because he does not see 1437 on the map right now, so he's going to play a little bit farther back. They're just going to have to rely purely on right clicks. It's going to be hard to bring him down if he decides to go for that. Let's see, Bambo just trying to weaken Misery up. If he could bait a blink out of him, it'll be fantastic. 1437, they should come around, scare him off, and that's going to be pretty much it. Can't kill an anti mage with you no know, stuns. It's just, that's, out, that's outrageous to even think that you could do that. Uh, but that, uh, le because he left that mid lane, Sing Sing is going to be under a little bit of heat from that same tornado. 
That same freaking tornado. It lasts way too long. They should really fix the tornado. Oh, in the top lane is a little bit of a dive going onto the Sand King. Sand King is taking a lot of poison damage, and he uh, actually, come with me, is the one who got netted. Black is sitting in a sandstorm. He should be just fine. No, he's actually going to run away right in the middle of the Changes Crease. Windrunner with another arrow, picking off the Sand King. So far, this dual lane on the top. Not working for Mouse at all. That's three kills that have been given away, and Lacoste picking up two of them. 700 gold with Boots and Mega Basilius. Very, very dangerous Windrunner going to be coming in the future. 157 Sing Sing looking for an opening, or just posturing at least. Oh no, Misery somehow might get a solo kill on Bambo, who's completely out of mana, but Misery, unfortunately not level 6, so he can't pop that uh, Nature Prophet quite yet, maybe a little bit later. Miracle just dewarding, and so that Enchantress could get another frickin' Wildkin and send that tornado down. That stuff is so frickin' annoying. But uh, Mouseport seems to know what's going on. Sand King is gonna run into Aki as well as Miracle. Miracle taking quite a bit of damage from that Fade Bolt, as well as the Burrow Strike, and Miracle just could get right click down. One more hit is gonna do it. Yes, Miracle is gonna take a fall. Rubik dissipate. picking up a kill, kind of redeeming himself a little bit, but uh, unfortunately for Mouse, they brought two people up from the mid lane, giving PyCat that much more free uh, space to farm. Very difficult as an evoker in this type of lane, since you have to try to keep your distance. Uh, it's You won't get insta-killed, but you will be under a lot of heat. You can see uh, that PyCat is getting three points of quas, not only for that health regeneration, but also for that strength, because every single point of strength against a kill lane like this will help you enormously. He is going to go for that Wex build. Uh, they, it looks like He's confident that his team has enough, and he doesn't really need to do it. Disruption, Soulcatcher, as well as a Torrent going to hit on PyCat. But Miracle is here to support, and there is a Tornado as well, slowing down everyone. PyCat's taking quite a bit of damage from this uh, Shadow Demon, but Miracle is dealing even more damage to Sing Sing. Beautiful salve, and he's forced to use another salve. And Miracle trying to run away. He's going to get hit by this Torrent. No, Anti-Mage picking up Bambo. How does that happen? Are you level 6, Misery? Yes, you are. You just burned all his mana. So Misery actually managing to pick up a kill against a ranged Nature's Prophet and out-level him as well. 13 for 4, well, 23 for 10. So this Misery doing work on the bot lane. I d definitely think that wasn't the lane that CLG expected to win, but they're winning it anyway. Colt's not going on to 1437. He's taking quite a bit of damage, and Windrunner, damn it, missed a kill on the top lane. Rubik getting nailed down by that Enchantress-Windrunner combo. So arrows and spears everywhere. Now there's three people from Mao's, and with these three people, they could easily get a kill on someone if they have the opening. Fortunately, now they're a little bit too spread out. Miracle is going to unleash his Gale onto 1437 with a Cold Snap from the Invoker. No, cold Snap will be enough to kill 1437. No, it actually gets denied by the Sand King. Beautiful Sand King play. Sand King bur then Burrow strikes into the Venomancer for a kill. Tornado going off onto Sing Sing, and Sing Sing's taking a lot of damage. He does have a bottle, so he can serve for quite a bit. But Pycat is getting blocked up by Black, so this Black just playing beautifully this game so far. We'll take a couple of right clicks, but he will save Sing Sing from an inevitable doom. Come with me, he's now getting dove upon just a little bit. Shackled to a tree, enchant as well, and with the Wildkin, he just peck him down. Spears is actually, no, actually from the arrow, Windrunner. Oh god, Windrunner is 4 for 0. Phase Boots, Magic Stick, plus 1,000 gold. Four staff could be coming really quickly if he chooses to go for that build. Misery got ganked a little bit by Bamboo as well as one, as, uh, as well as 1437. But he's sitting at 100, uh, 300 health. He should be fine. He's not going to die. Nature Prophet doesn't have his ultimate. doesn't have his mana for an ultimate. And 1437 doesn't have any burst damage. So Anti-Mage will be able to blink away from anything. If he's going to die, it's because Mouse Sports will do something extremely aggressive. Which, you know, leave it to Mouse Sports for doing, to do something extremely aggressive. But that will be, should be suicidal, trying to dive the Anti-Mage who's hiding in a jungle. Let's see who's actually... Let's not, I like the creep kills better. Last of the Nice. Windrunner, Invoker, Anti-Mage, all three of the lanes going very well for CLG. I'm surprised PyCat is getting as much as he is in this kill lane, but, uh, oh no, come with me once again, gonna get Dove upon. Spending all his gold to buy a teleportation scroll, but that's another kill going the way of this top lane. Venomancer picking that one up, who's only level 3, so kind of getting the short end of the stick as far as the tri-lane goes, but... I'm sure he's okay with his Windrider being level 8, going for a very fast mech, and this tower is going to get taken down as well. So all three lanes being won very handily by CLG. Uh, I don't think they expected to dominate like this. Like, Invoker would have been at least kept even. Anti-Mage probably expected to lose. 
But Misery is just playing very aggressively on that Nature's Prophet, constantly burning all his mana. And the right clicks from the Prophet won't go through that poor man's shield to do much damage at all. So Anti-Mage kind of doing okay for himself. He's going to pick up his treads and try to get a little bit more of his early game items going. It's not nearly as much farm as you would see from an Anti-Mage who is... Well, if the Anti-Mage and Windrunner switch places, the Anti-Mage would definitely have a lot more farm. But uh, to hold down this lane by himself, where when CLG could have just as easily sent a Windrunner to hold down this lane, this is a very impressive play by the Anti-Mage. Invoker now might be in a little bit of trouble. Dark Green Dying is here. That is black. It's Sand King. So he might be looking for a little bit of an opening on this Invoker. But Invoker does have Wex. He does have Quas. And that does mean he does have... Ghost walk in his arsenal. If he could invoke it, but the also the uh, tornado and cold snap will give him a little bit of time as well. So it's very hard to gank an invoker who's going for this cross wex build. But misery gonna blink in very aggressively once again on bambo. A lot of damage. Misery just manhandling this lane through sheer tankiness alone. Lots of rotations coming up from Maus looking to kill the top lane. But it seems like CLG is aware of that with that Venomous Ward. They definitely are aware of that. Gale hitting just on the tip onto the Sand King, following up with the net. Are they going to get a block? Yes, they do with the Plague Ward. Black is in a huge amount of trouble. No, he very good burst strike, actually. He's going to get out of this. Wait for Gale to time out. Drink your healing salve. Good to go. Good play by the Sand King, but very good response by Miracle. Just recognizing that there's someone there, slowing him down just on the tip, and then Plague Warding him into Trap. Good play. Net now going on to come with me. Is there going to be a shackle? No, the cost is a little bit too far away. As you see uh, Black once again rotating around. And Mouse Sports is spending a lot of time. Oh no, they might actually have a kill onto Pycat. Torrent as well as Ship going to be going through. Pycat taking a lot of damage with the Burrow Strike. Pycat's definitely going down unless he is... Oh my god, you have fast hands, sir. Quickly invoking a Ghost Walk. Not quite enough damage coming the, out from Mouse Sports. And the Invoker gets away. As I said before, it's very hard to kill that Invoker with three points in Quas, because he has all of that strength. Well, not to mention Magic Stick Charges, plus a Bracer. So that could help a little bit. Now, CLG, oh, going to go dive once again. Come with me. Dodge the Gale. But at this point, it doesn't even matter. He did manage to steal Wind Run. So he's going to survive for a little bit longer, but he cannot live forever. Aki's going to tank up the tower, because... Why the hell not? Bambo teleported in, but he unfortunately does not have any mana for a sprout. Now, CLG, cold snapping, sing sing. If he can get a shackle, yes, there is a shackle. And a power shot, fully charged. Tornado is going to slam him to the ground. Bam, dead. Sing sing dies. 10 for 2 in favor of CLG. They're looking very good this fight. One still leading the creep board as far as that goes. All three lanes have been won quite handily. Not to mention the single tower advantage plus 8 kills. Now CLG can do a little bit of creep cutting. Don't even need an axe for to do this. Just to buy a little bit more room for their creep wave to push in. As well as pressure come with me if he decides to poke his head out. Which if he pokes his head out for the 7th time he's not going to be happy about that. He's actually going to go ahead. Try to duel Aki. They're both level 6 but uh, with those impetuses it's going to be hard to really exchange equally. So the cost. Already has a mech up, 11 minute mech, phase boots, Basilius, level 9 Windrunner, this the cost is very, very deadly. Venomancer isn't as high a level as his buddies, but he could just turn this around with a very easy kill on Come With Me. Gale actually just missing the tip this time, but Come With Me playing very aggressively. He managed to draw a pretty good spell of Venomous Wards, so he would use his mana pool to spam those out whenever and wherever he wants. Looks like... 1437 is wanting a dive on Pycat, but he still has that Ghost Walk invoked. So it's going to be very, very difficult. They're going to have to chain stun him perfectly, but they did it last time. Everything hit, and everything hit rather perfectly as well, and it just simply wasn't enough to kill this Invoker. He doesn't have as many Magic Stick charges as he did last time, but it might not matter. Windrunner picking up another kill onto Rubik. There we go. Disruption onto him. Boat and Torrent going to come through. Pycat is going to take quite a bit of damage. Bro Strike as well. He is out of mana, but it doesn't matter. He's out of mana because he already casted Ghost Walk. Pycat once again walks out of this in a very ghostly fashion, and Rubik once again taking a fall in the top lane. This Rubik is doing nothing but feeding. Come with me. 
not having the best game of his life, but he's getting shut down because of the very aggressive support play by CLG, not to mention the Windrunner Anti-Mage doing a little bit of shenaniganry, blinking very aggressively towards, uh, who is it? He wasn't going for anyone in particular, he kind of just got uh, caught out of position there, but he still has 1,400 gold, he could go for a battle fear at this point if he chooses to do so, most likely going to be a vanguard considering the Ring of Health, actually no, no, he could go for the battle fury, no, that'll, that'll work. And then CLG is set for the late game. So CLG looks to be in prime position to just steamroll Maus in the second game. Maus still not nearly out of it, but they seem to just keep wasting their opportunities trying to get PyCat, and it's just not working out for them. Like, it didn't work the first time, it's not going to work another time. And now Sing Sing getting cold snap, taking a ton of damage from this invoker. You can't escape from this invoker, he has max movement speed. Well, perfectly then, Torrent will help, so Sing Sing gets to walk away from that couple of supports from CLG looking to pick someone off. It's going to be Bamboo if anyone, but PyCat doesn't have any of his useful spells up. Now Cold Snap is up, so they can engage onto someone, and if Bambo we're actually gone for a hand of Midas, so that's pretty late Midas. But if they've managed to keep him alive, then we'll be able to try to equalize the farm a little bit, because he still is behind the anti-mage as far as the farm goes. Now, uh, where did he go? He teleported. Where are you? Where are you? Teleport to the base. Has that has a thousand gold in his bank account. But now we do see a rotation from Aki. Looking once again probably for come with me. He does have blink though, so it's gonna be very hard to nail him down. Orange is gonna teleport in as well. If he gets a shackle shot onto come with me, Enchant is gonna be able to slow him down just a little bit. He's forced to burn the blink. Telekinesis onto the enchantress, but it's not gonna be enough because the power shot from the wind is simply too powerful. Yeah. Right? Right? Power, power shot. I'll be here all day. Alright, so now that that's over. Invoker actually picked up a dr an urn. Uh, drum is standard because movement speed Invoker is pretty awesome. Oh no, Tornado going on to Sing Sing with a teleportation from the Venomancer. Sing Sing is in a lot of trouble using the boat to try to get himself a little bit more durability, but at this point, it, I don't know if it will matter. He's taking a lot of damage from this Invoker and you can't run away. That invoker is going to right click him down, going to get himself a couple of urn charges. The reason why, oh, what the hell, another kill in the bot lane, the cost, as, as well as Misery picking up 1437, 14 for 2 in favor of CLG. The reason why you don't see urn being used that much on invoker is because he's not really one to be roaming around and getting very early game kills. He got the urn kind of late, and if he got it earlier, he would have had a couple more charges, but usually see it on people who focus more on ganking such as the enchantress but if you're gonna get all the kills why the hell not get it come with me managing to pick up the plague wards from his spell steal so that will help him a little bit as far as his tower goes but he's got to watch out for that tornado he does get hit by it and you are so dead emp gonna snap him and self uh, disruption coming out from 137 gonna buy him a little bit of time but I don't think it's going to be enough time. Torrent is going to be dodged by PyCat. Very beautiful dodge. Venomancer with that Gale. Knocking the last hit points out of Come With Me's health bar. And he's going to take a fall once more. Oh god, this Anti-Mage almost has his Battle Fury already. This Anti-Mage's farm is insane in a solo lane. Just ridiculous play coming out from Misery. What are you doing, Bambo? Well, that's not what you want to be. You're not supposed to be there. You're going to wait 20 seconds. I would hide here if I were you. Or just don't move. Maybe the other team won't see you. But anyway, uh, CLG will pick up a mid-tier 1 tower. That is going to be their fourth tower of the game. They haven't lost a single one of their own. Pycat sending out a tornado kind of as a uh, cautionary thing. He does cold snap, sing, cold snap sing sing. Let's say that ten times really quickly. Putting a little bit of damage on him. Come with me once again. Stealing that Venom Ward. Plague Ward. I don't know why I call it Venomous Ward. Probably because it's Venomancer. Plague Ward. Eh, Ward, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about, but Misery already has a Battle Fury. 17 minutes in with Treads, with the Poor Man Shield, in a solo lane. I just want to... I hope you guys understand how ridiculous that is against Prophet Solo. The Prophet isn't, like, the best laner. He's no Queen of Pain. But still, that is pretty freaking ridiculous to have that much, and the cost... Four staff mech phase boots, not doing that bad himself. EMP gonna hit onto Sing Sing. 
disruption from the Shadow Demon will save his mana, but I don't think it's really going to help that much. Sing Sing took a lot of damage from that, and now come with me, getting Gale. He did steal Cold Snap, but it's not going to help him here. Right clicks from the entire team, plus a power shot from Lacoste, bringing down that Rubik once again for the 10th time. Poor Staff and Shackles trying to latch onto Sing Sing. It won't happen, but Lacoste seems to be very confident in his chances. Gonna line up the power shot, not going to hit. Misery is now in this fight. He does have his mana void, and Sing Sing doesn't have much mana. Oh, God, the perfect er Sunstrike coming out from Invoker with the Anti Mage helping out the mana void, stalling him off for just a little bit. And Lacoste getting another kill on 1437. Lacoste is just a well, monster kill. He's a monster, that's what he is. Bambo looking for a kill, trying to sprout Lacoste blindly, but it's not going to happen. The rest of CLG is coming in, and Mouse Bambo's got to get out of here. At this point, it's too late, though, because the there goes the EMP. Shackled to a tree. Bam, there goes all your mana, and the right clicks from Enchantress. This damage, 3,200 gold. Shit, this, these guys have a lot of gold, guys. That's another kill. 19 for 2. I think I saw another 4 staff on someone. Yeah, 4 staff on the Venomancer. So even the supports are pretty darn stacked. Enchantress, 3,200 gold. Should have gone for a heart, because that would be awesome. Not the, not a good item. I mean, like, it's a good item, but not the best item on Enchantress, but still awesome. Now Pycat is in the mid lane still. He doesn't have Tornado Invoke, but he could get that really quickly, and I think that's what's going to happen. Just lay down the EMP. Miracle that Force Staffs himself in to get that ultimate off. Shackled, 1437 to a tree, and Windrunner is going to pick up a godlike streak. Come, come with me. Stealing Venomancer's ultimate, but it doesn't matter. Misery swoops in with that ultimate for another kill. I don't think anyone's going to take over. Not enough damage coming out from the other team. So CLG is going to live. Just barely for the Venomancer. Let's see if, uh, oh, Bambo. Oh, that's unfortunate. Good play by the Vendomancer, teleporting where he did, but this is going to be a free Roshan. I think he's going to try to do something with. No, it's too late. His rage is going to blink up, force Sing Sing back. This Anti Mage is an absolute terror. This Windrunner is an absolute terror. This Venomancer is an absolute terror, and this Invoker is on his way to a Sheepstick already. It's not looking good for Mouse Sports. This tower could even be denied. So everything that Mouse Sports is trying to do just not working out for them. Brown is farming the enemy jungle, which is pretty dangerous. So balls of steel on this guy. He's actually going to run into Aki. And lucky for him, there's not enough support coming in. So he's going to teleport out just fine. But while you farm uh, their jungle, Misery is going to farm your Ancients. He does have uh, interest for the blinking. But he's pretty damn stacked, level 15, 20 minutes into the game. Leading the chart as far as last hits go. If you just jumped into the game right now, you would not know that Misery soloed a lane. That would be like the last thing you would think of. Misery just doing his split pushing thing. Because he's very slippery, oh so slippery. Oh no, come with me, you do not want to be here all alone. Stop doing this, come with me, you're breaking my heart. Tornado from Invoker will kill you. Come with me, he's just going to try to dodge everything, but if Invoker decides to launch out a tornado, it's going to mean death for the Rubik. Right now, uh, I, don't, I don't know what Mao's going to do. This far behind, 19 kill deficit, they have no big items. Their biggest item is phase boots. Well, and Midas, I guess. But uh, what they need to do right now is just get picks. Just roam as five, get as many picks as you can, and don't make any trades. Because you make trades, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna equalize the game ever. One four three seven and Black have the right idea, trying to go for the cost, but they cannot do this by themselves. They try to do it, even with the Nature's Prophet there. The cost does have a four staff and wind run. It's going to be impossibly car hard to kill her without at least a fourth person. Especially now that Black as well as Nature's Prophet have revealed themselves. 1437 is still hidden. Sand King purchased up a Blink Dagger, so they could jump on Lacoste if they choose to do so. But now she has support in the form of Pycat Lacoste. Windrun looking for a Shackle onto Bambo. It is going to uh, interrupt the teleportation. The Power Shot going to cap him off. 1437 going to purge Lacoste, trying to get away. But there's a haste rune on the invoker in the form of Max Wex plus drum phase boots. 1437 is going to try to run away, but a shackle to a tree plus a power shot is going to mean a double kill for Lacoste. Heal in the meantime, going after Black with the Venomancer. Aki, no disable there. Sunstrike or no Sunstrike. Teleport is going to happen. But 
There's two e very easy kills for CLG, and every single kill is just another nail in the coffin for Mouse. They cannot afford to give up any more kills, so they still want to win this, but it's it's looking real bleak at this point. Manta style now picked up on the anti mage. And uh even though Kunkka has crit, even if he does get a crit on everyone, at this point they're all high enough level to withstand it, and then just retaliate by blinking in. Uh, blink epicenter coming in from black. This could be a good opportunity. A chance just to be killed right off the bat. Come with me, try and dual pie cap, but that's not gonna end well for you. Uh, Sunstrike gonna land onto black, and they're just gonna try to force him out. There he is, getting forced out by deafening blast. Anti mage's illusions actually there, still, and black chilling in the sandstorm once again. Is there anything else to bring him out? Power shot? No, actually cleave from misery. Nice identification of that right there. Misery picking up another kill, double kill. Twenty six for three. Uh, that, was, that was pretty much as good of a team fight as Mouse could want. They had the epicenter land, instantly killed the enchantress before she could get anything off. But unfortunately, the invoker, simply too strong, tried to. The Rubik tried to duel him. Which, I mean, like, just look at the items. It's not gonna end well. Blink in. 1437 gets mauled by a whole bunch of anti mage illusions. This tower is gonna go down. This rack is gonna go down. And Mouse Sports looks like they're gonna take a trip to the loser's bracket. Because I don't see them coming back from this at all. Aghanim Scepter picked up by the Enchantress. Come with me. Getting manhandled simply by one Anti-Mage Illusion. Losing a third of his health. Burrow Strike in from Black. Going straight into that invisibil invisibility. There's nothing that could really pull him out of it. So I guess he's going to survive there. And this Rax might be defended. But that's just because everyone else from CLG kind of teleported back. Teleported out. Gone to the other lanes. And they could... Do, they could do this sort of thing because Mouse has absolutely no map control right now. Nature's Prophet has picked up an Aghanim Scepter, so his ultimate's gonna hurt a little bit more. But unfortunately, once you get that burst damage out, it's I mean, like 434, that was pretty good. But they need a little bit more than that. They need sustained damage, and that's something that they simply don't have right now. Sanking is gonna blink. Burrow Strike into three heroes. Very good Burrow Strike. But Sing Sing and 1437 getting caught off by the Anti Mage. Shackle to a tree is Sing Sing, and now Anti Mage just wailing on the rest of them. Double kill so far for the Anti Mage. Triple kill, no Windrunner picking up that Kunga kill. And now a Power Shot gonna land. Do two double kills going the way of CLG. 31 for 4. Buyback from Black, but he doesn't have an Epicenter. Well, he actually almost does, so. I'm gonna try to defend this, but an Epicenter alone, especially a level 1 Epicenter from a level 10 Sanking, will not be enough to kill anyone at this point. Vlad's been picked up for anti-mage. Hell, why not? When your head get more ahead, and this, in this case, it's just kill people and not die. Sanking now getting launched tornado, hexed up immediately by that invoker, and they're gonna chase after Sing Sing, popping off a drum charge, looking for Sing Sing, and he's gonna get hit by a torrent to lay up misery just a little bit. Shackle holding up Sing Sing, and just so many, so much damage coming out from this team. 33 to 4. Mao's is just getting completely steamrolled. This is gonna mean Rax. Come with me. You gotta be careful because if Misery sees you, you're pretty much dead. Like, you kill 1437 in about three hits. His illusions are just trucking in. Uh, he, actually, Anti Mage Illusions burned out all of his own mana. The tornado would have killed him if the Anti Mage did not. And now, come with me. You know, it doesn't matter where you are because Misery will find you. Actually, stunning Misery, and Misery will take a fall, but he does have Aegis, so. Kind of a ho very hollow victory there. The Raxes have gone down. Bot Raxes most likely are the next to fall. Brown doing what he can. Like, he's playing correctly, trying to force people back to defend their own top lane, but at this point, CLG doesn't care. They're strong enough to kill anyone who comes out of the fountain. And Sanking clearly is not prepped for this. Bro struck out, and he actually managed to launch the orb of Anti Mage up. But Invoker picking up a kill onto the Sand King, and Mao's 1437 getting chased down, as well as Sing Sing. Everyone just getting fountain farmed right now, even though Brown is doing what he can, trying to take a Rax. Uh, CLG could just take all the Raxes a lot faster. They don't even have to take the Raxes, they could just waltz right into the throne and take that out. Melee range has fallen, range Rax has fallen, Rubik has fallen for the 15th time, and Sing Sing. In classic Sing Sing fashion, sold as Chrysalis, bought a Mask of Madness, and there's the GGGGG coming out from Maus. That is going to be the set, guys. CLG taking the set 2 0. That is going to move them along in the winner's bracket. Wait for someone from the loser's bracket, I believe. 
I have to take another good look at it, but uh, this game was played a little bit ago. Mouseport's going to get dropped down to the lo loser's bracket. They're still in this. They have to go through a whole bunch more teams. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this set will go up with an anti-spoiler, because spoilers suck. As we found farming, they going to get killed. No time to use that ghost scepter, bro. But this set will go up with a another game, a pub game that was requested. Ooh, trying to go. For, oh, we actually got him. Betamancer died to the Sand King. Too bad Sand King is going to die to everyone else. Uh, it's going to go up with the pub game. It's going to go up with the, me playing Ricky Maru. That's already up. Then you already know that. So that should be fun. And I think that's about it. So thanks for watching, guys. Score screen and then GG. No score screen? There it is.